uh, people in our community ask what's the difference between NFT standards that we are seeing on Ethereum today and the standards that we develop within Luxo. And I will explain that right now. Um, the most common NFT standard in Ethereum is 7 to 1. So 7 to 1 is basically a smart contract that has a mapping of IDs, for example, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, uh, 4, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 6, right? It has a mapping of certain IDs to an address, 0x12 and 0xca and 0xdf. And that's already, my mapping is a little map, and uh, 0x11. So <coughs> basically in, in 7 to 1, we simply map IDs to addresses. And what we have, we have attached a, for each ID, we can have a JSON document that describes the asset itself. So the problem with that is, and this is, this is a nice evolution of ERC20, and it's basically just, you know, adding this one ID factor to it. And later they came a ERC7 one token receive function and so on. What's the difference to what we are developing? It's basically making those assets um, more interactable, more smart contract readable, and importantly, we have new type of digital assets where it's not only about one unique item, but where it's about uh, you have a asset that maybe exists a thousand times, or maybe exists a hundred times. So, I proposed a standard in 2017 <coughs> called ESS 7 to 5, and ESS 7 to 5 is what we are using for universal profiles, which is smart contract based accounts, but also for what we call digital certificates, or you'd call it NFT 2.0. So, um, what this basically means is we have a 7 to 5 contract which has uh, a key value store that it can attach information. So, you have a little key value store. <coughs> and we have a combination where we attach a 777. Hi, Nikita. Hi. Um, where we attach a 777. And the 777 is literally the same like an ERC20, but it has some extra fanciness to it, um, which we even modify within our standards. <coughs> but I will not go into that detail. But you can assume that a 77 is like an ERC20. So it means there's a number mapped to an address and almost every wallet in the blockchain space that is compatible with ERC20 or Ethereum actually is also compatible with ERC20. So what we are able to do here is basically we have a key value store and we have the ability to actually have a account address like uh, different addresses, yeah? like I can make the same. And each one then has a mapping to a number, which could be one or this guy could own two. So the benefit here is if you, I want to issue a thousand assets of a seven to one, I would literally either have a batch functionality or I have to call the min function a thousand times because I have to create thousand, one thousand different IDs that then later can be mapped to one thousand different addresses. I also have to update the JSON uh, file for each one. While here I create one smart contract that defines one type of asset, I can have a key value store that either uh, links to a JSON file, right? So this could be a JSON file, but it can also, it also has an owner. And the owner is in this case, when we're talking about NFTs, obviously the creator, which would link back to his uh, universal profile or just the key which obviously is not uh, recommended. And that owner is also able to update to this key value store. You can also then add all kinds of new things. You can add a reputation system. You can add a token that's rel related to those items. Uh, you could have all kinds of new smart contracts and new kind of like things that are smart contract readable and has to be smart contract readable added to this key value store. But if I want to create a thousand assets here, I simply have to create one function, call the min function to one specific address, and I can create a thousand units, right? Because I'm just creating a number. In this case, 
What we're doing here is we are getting rid of the decimal amount. So every ERC20 normally has a decimal amount defined, which normally is 18, and we basically put it to uh, zero so that each single unit, so each lowest unit of the token represents one item. <clears throat> There's some other fanciness to it, uh, like the ability to inform other smart contracts when they receive things. This is uh, our first center we actually proposed called LSP1, which is a universal receiver contract that works in combination with the universal profiles. So that means when you are sending an asset to a universal profile, that universal profile will be uh, informed. And that standard also works for any kind of asset in the future. So we don't have to um, you know, come up with thousands of functions that you have to implement in your universal profile. But in simple terms, the difference is that this is actually an evolution and a bit more sophisticated version of what L721 right now is which is a simple mapping between an ID and an address. And on top of that, you could also do batch processing. Then we would be in the range of 1155, which is nothing else than combining a bunch of ERC20 or 721 into one smart contract, giving up some extra batch functionality. All of these things can come later, or we can just uh, use things from the 1155 standard for that. But the essence of having more flexible assets, more flexible NFTs is kind of like the, the key. I hope that makes it more clear, or you're even more confused than before. Uh, anyway, that's it. You can read the standards in our LSP repository if you very want to dig into the technicalities.